I was given the task to take you on a journey and show you the ideas behind building intelligent machines. And while we are at a conference about theology and technology, today I will stick to the uh, technology part. But if you haven't met Professor Crater, he not only has put together for us a successful conference, he's also one of the leaders in artificial intelligence today, which he teaches at the Masters University. And not only that, but he has thought deeply about theology and technology and how the two connect together. So if you haven't talked to him, I highly recommend that you go talk to him. He has lots of interesting things to say. So let's dive in. Imagine that you have a dream. Your dream is to build a robot. If you're a child, maybe you want a robot that bo you can boss around, that you give commands, uh, you know, that does things for you, makes you laugh. If you have a business, maybe you want a robot that does the mundane tasks that maybe you don't want to do. I personally would love to have a robot that does all my chores. So I will talk today about a robot that cleans, because that's interesting to me. No matter what your robot does, how would you go about building it? Well, maybe you're going to tell me you're going to gather some kind of building blocks. You will get some metal and plastic and arms and eyes and build your robot. Wonderful. Here it is. It's ready. It's beautiful. It's perfect. But there's a problem. Right now, the robot that we just built cannot move on its own, let alone make intelligent decisions. It's more like a doll than an intelligent machine. What's the problem? What's missing? Maybe you're thinking, well, if I say hello to it, how do I get it to say hello back? If it has a temperature sensor, how do I get it to take the information about temperature and make some intelligent decisions based on it? If it has a microphone, how does it process sounds? In other words, you somehow have to get your robot to sync. Now, getting a robot to sync can seem like an overwhelming endeavor. How do you take something with metal and buckets and mops and get it to act intelligently, possibly without your intervention? Also, we don't even fully understand how humans think. How can we take something that we don't understand and put it into a robot? The concept of thinking is very complex, and people can't even quite agree uh, what exactly are the mechanics of thinking. So what we're going to do is we're going to change and simplify the idea of thinking to something that we can accomplish. We will simplify thinking to the idea of computation, something that can be calculated. Now, I will talk about concepts on two different levels. There's going to be the physical level, the dust, so to speak, the building blocks, the electricity, the wires, the connections. And I will color those in pink. And then there's going to be things on the conceptual level, which I will color in yellow. And those are the ideas behind why things are the way they are. They will be answers to why things are connected the way they are and what do those connections accomplish. So here we are on our journey from electricity to intelligent machines. We have said that we will take the thinking of the robot and somehow turn into computation and figure out how to do it. So let's break down computation. To build computation, we will use the building blocks of logic. More specifically, we will use something called Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra is the math of logic so, of sorts. Its name comes from logician, uh, 19th logician George Bull, who wrote a book called An Investigation of the Laws of Thought, which is a very interesting title to us, especially as we're trying to figure out how to get a robot to think. He says in this book that the logic of human thought can be expressed as mathematical operations of sorts. And so here, Boolean algebra was born, uh, and it is a way to describe and manipulate logical statements and determine if they are true or false. So Boolean algebra is a conceptual, is in the concept, is in the abstract realm, which is why I colored it in yellow. And I said it's a way to describe 
and manipulate logical statements and determine if they're true or false. Now, what would be some examples of logical statements for our cleaning robot? If we're going to make it think, what sorts of things do we want a cleaning robot to think about? Well, we would like it to think about things such as the room is clean, or the room is dirty, or the battery is charged, or the mop is clean, and so on. Great. But how does the robot know those things? What does it get that information? It gets it from its sensors. So if we want the robot to know...